Gloria, Gloria, you are just a feminist, communist, your alias is socialist, pregnant miss, CIA, we got your number, oh you think we don't remember, all the dirty deeds you've done, now we got you on the run, calling Gloria, Gloria, <laughs> is this not crazy? This is Pixie. Her new nickname is CIA Pixie. All right. Now let's see what she's got to say about Reagan. Hello, America, FBI and CIA agents and fellow cult members. Welcome to Culture Club USA. I'm Debrava. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to delve into what many will see as an uncomfortable subject, but one that must be addressed as we quickly escalate into what many deem is the most pressing and important time in the history of this country. As many of you know, there's a war going on outside no man is safe from. It doesn't matter if you're three feet or eight one. And that war, my friends, is the war on men and masculinity. It's the reason the Manosphere, Red Pill, and adjacent channels exist. And if you know anything about my channel, you know that my commentary confronts the war on femininity. But tonight, I'm delving into the single most destructive and potentially dangerous Trojan horse that could derail this entire movement. And its saboteurs, well, they sit gleefully among us. You see them daily on the largest platforms, debating their ideas and ultimately penetrating the minds of young men into a ball of mass confusion. Now, most of you are quite familiar with them, Names like Farah Khalidi, Jasmine Jafar, and Pixie have quickly transformed a masculine, testosterone-driven community into a feminist, gynocentric, emotional schoolgirl shouting match. This, folks, is scary. Okay, the first clip that I'm going to show you tonight features all three of the women that I just mentioned as guests on one of the biggest podcasts in the Manosphere space, called the Whatever Podcast. Here, they debate the Daily Wire's Michael Knowles on virtues of modern feminism. Now, folks, debates like these have become commonplace in the manosphere as a new wave of feminists have been allowed to infiltrate this formerly man-centric space. Okay, let's dive in. Yeah, I generally consider myself a progressive overall. Okay, and do you all consider yourselves feminists? Mm -hmm. Now, before we go any further, in case you're unaware, I just want to introduce who the women are. So the one on the far left with her breasts way out, which they always are, is the self-proclaimed 304, which is Ho, by the way, lawyer, Jasmine Jafar. The one in the middle is Pixie. And the one on the far right with the glasses, of course, is Farah Khalidi. Mm -hmm. okay, Depending that, on the that, definition. I hope none of you bamboozled me here. Okay, so, anyways, <laughs> um, so I think a good jumping off point here, and I think we'll start with you guys and then we'll have Michael respond. What is feminism? Um, I think the... The most common definition is the social, political, and economic equality between the sexes. So according to that definition, I would definitely identify as a feminist. Okay. Yeah. In general, I agree with that definition. I believe that we should not be discriminated unfairly on the basis of sex, if I had to add any addition to feminism. I would agree with all that. And then I would also add on just kind of adding more cultural currency to just female spaces, women's interests, and just women's proclivities in general. Hmm. Now... Before Michael comments, I just want you to pay close attention. I mean, notice these ladies. They're very calm, cool, collected, extremely composed. I just want you to pay attention to their demeanor. And might I say, they are all quite beautiful in their own way, right? All right. I digress. Hmm. 
I actually think feminism does the opposite of that in practice. And frankly, going all the way back to the beginning of feminism in the 18th century, probably my definition of feminism would be Gloria Steinem's definition. She was the very famous feminist of the second wave, mm-hmm. uh, which is that a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. Feminism is the idea that men and women are not complementary. They're not different and helpful to one another, but they're identical and indiscernible. That they're, you know, there are some superficial differences. You ladies might be a little prettier perhaps than I am, but all in all, we're basically exactly the same. And I, I don't think that's true. I think it's a false view of human nature, and I think it's harmful to everybody and especially harmful to women. Right. I've worked with Gloria Steinem's company, Women's Media Center, for like four years back My in college. My condolences. <laughs> He's funny, I must say. It's funny. My condolences. <laughs> and but I think what she's trying to say is that women, you can like define yourself and your career and your potential outside of simply marriage and children. Okay. Now that we have seen them, heard, you know, their thoughts on feminism and Gloria Steinem was brought up. Well, that's very interesting. And the most interesting part there is that Farah Khalidi actually worked for Gloria Steinem. Okay. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, I'm going to introduce to you a little bit of the background on Gloria Steinem and why she is so important to this story. Also, why her connection to Farah Khalidi should raise a lot of eyebrows within the Manosphere space. Let's dive in. Gloria Steinem, the CIA, and feminism. And... I have always been of the understanding, and I think a lot was backed by Nelson Rockefeller and his family, that feminism was a creation fed through Gloria Steinem as a methodology to double the country's output and production by getting women out of the house and in the workplace because they wanted to increase the GDP of America. Okay, hold on. (laughs) Yes, they wanted, we all know a lot of that, right? But did we all know that Gloria Steinem, as you just heard, was a CIA operative? Okay, that's the point of this clip. Gloria Steinem was a CIA operative. And what he's saying is that the government used her to push feminism in order to get women out of the household. And he's saying part of it was to increase the GDP, okay? The important part is that she was a CIA agent. America, how do you do very quickly? How do you double the consumer purchasing? How do you sell two cars for every family? You get the women out of the house. Is that something you've looked into? So I went back really far into Gloria Steinem. I went back to the start and, and started, tried to work out who this puzzle was because um, she was so well made. She's so well designed um, to look at. She's so well designed. I want you to just let that simmer. Do you hear what he's saying as he describes Gloria Steinem? Now, we haven't seen her yet, but we will shortly. He says that she was so well made so well designed even to look at now look at the three women okay jasmine pixie and farah wouldn't you say that they were well made i mean they're perfectly composed i mean they're all beautiful they're honey pots basically right and they're infiltrating a man's space and one of them worked for Gloria Steinem who is a CIA operative who still is alive by the way and probably still works for the CIA just saying just keep that in mind signed uh, there's a brilliant uh, uh, comic book I found uh, where they did um, a mock-up comic book I think it was in um, oh, Esquire I think it was in Esquire magazine in the 70s and it was a uh, super Gloria and how she's this amazing feminist. She's there beating up the Soviets in Europe, and she's out there doing all of the things that feminists... Oh, one day she's a playboy bunny, and then she's a a fearless leader of the youth movement and all of this. And it was so... One day she's a playboy bunny, and then the next day she's a fearless leader. Let me just point one thing out, okay? Two out of three of those young ladies are OnlyFans prostitutes. I mean, basically, that's modern-day Playboy, right? I mean, we've taken it a lot further now, right? So Pixie, 
apparently is not. But Farah Khalidi, the 304 whole lawyer, is a prostitute on OnlyFans. She actually gave up pursuing her career as a lawyer because she has a law degree to be a prostitute on OnlyFans. And then you have the one in glasses who claims that she's a virgin OnlyFans prostitute, okay? And here's Gloria Steinem. What an example, right? Playboy bunny to uh, saving the world, the feminist, you know, warrior. A lot of coincidences here. Who oh, contrived? I mean, uh, obviously contrived. If she was already working for the CIA, was she in fact protesting or was she infiltrating the organizations for the CIA? Yeah, I believe, I believe the latter. Um, I, I, I think that's, they were trying to find her place. They were find, trying to find her place. Did you hear what he said here? The gentleman in blue? He asked him a question. Okay, if she was already working for the CIA, was she infiltrating? What do you think these three women are doing? I mean, is it possible that the three ladies that we're discussing here could be CIA agents infiltrating the manosphere spaces? I mean, think about it. Is that so far-fetched? One of them worked for them. Just saying. Filtrating the organizations for the CIA. Yeah, I believe I believe the latter. Um, I, I, I think that's... They were trying to find her place in the system. They were trying to find where to use her, where to utilize. And she really starts to enter onto the feminist movement. And that is going to coalesce very soon in the early 70s to Ms. Magazine, where... Um, she creates Ms. Magazine. Did she get funding from the CIA for Ms. Magazine? I believe Ms. Magazine was a complete CIA operation. So many parts of it, even the, the, the stories and the topics. They... You hear what he's saying here? He's saying that he believes that Ms. Magazine, which supposedly, right, supposedly Gloria Steinem created, was a total psyop created by the CIA including the stories. Interesting, right? And like we already know, Farah Khalidi worked for Gloria Steinem for four years. Could they be CIA agents? It's possible. Now, let's go back to the Whatever podcast and get a little deeper into who these three ladies actually are and pay close attention to their demeanor, how they look, how they present themselves. Let's dive in again. The irony, I think, of someone like a Gloria Steinem saying that we, we or insinuating that we just want women to live up to their fullest potential is that the, the way that she and the feminists have done it is to totally erase women. Mm -hmm. And I think this goes back way further than the second wave. You sometimes hear conservatives, the squishy kind, they say, we love the feminism, but only the, you know, the second wave, not the third wave, or we like the first wave, not the second, or whatever, we're on like the 10th wave now. But it's been a problem from the beginning. Even Mary Wollstonecraft, who, who founds feminism with the vindication of the rights of woman, uh, she writes that uh, providence has created men in such a way that they are... Um, more inclined to virtue and they're more endowed with virtue. And I think that's exactly what Gloria Steinem thinks because the, the way that second wave feminism actually was practiced was it denied the virtues particular to women and it said the only way to be virtuous and to flourish is to be a man. So if women want to be virtuous and flourish, they got to dress like men and they got to have the same attitudes towards sex as men and they got to work in the workplace exactly as men do and they just have to pretend to be men. Mm -hmm. But I think that's very uh, disrespectful to women and harmful to them because if a woman tries to be a man, she's always going to fail. I think um, what a lot of feminists would push back on or worry about is this. Now, before Pixie continues, I just want you to pay attention to one more thing here. The two of them are always taking notes, <laughs> not just on the whatever podcast, which we are watching right now. Everywhere they go, they have notepads and pens and they're constantly taking notes. Constantly taking notes. On what? On what? I mean... Gloria Steinem was infiltrating organizations. It seems to me that it's not one bit far-fetched that these women could be infiltrating the manosphere. I mean, what are you taking notes on? Why are you 
in this space taking notes, debating feminism. This was a man's space. It's like all they're doing is creating confusion. Not only are they creating confusion, they are also a major distraction. A major distraction. This one's got her breasts out sitting across from Michael Knowles. She's like, you know, beautiful. The other one is trying to play some other thing. It's like they've got one for each guy and they're there to distract. They're like watering down the message of the manosphere, the red pill, whatever you want to call it. Think about it. These are not conversations that would ever happen if these three women weren't sitting there on or worry about is this idea that we have ascribed gender to certain things that are kind of agendered. So for example, kind of agender. Now she's talking about genders. Listen to the narratives. It's a constant conversation that they are pushing over and over and over again. Think about what I'm saying and pay attention. You're going to see it as we go on. Well, when it comes to the workplace, um, the idea that like, oh, no, a woman must stay at home. Going out and working is a man's job. What you're arguing for is a kind of feminism that says, actually, uh, all the differences between men and women, that's totally true in the aggregate, you know, in these two different types. But on rare occasion, there's going to be some it's woman. It's not that rare. Like, let's say, like, okay, gender roles. Like, let's say most people, like, let's say 70 to 80% of people will fall into natural gender roles. But then there's still 20% of our population that may not. Mm -hmm. And do we make a society where we force that 20% into these roles, or do we allow choice? I think a lot of feminism, the cornerstone feminism is choice for women. You can't I'm stay home. I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so sure because what gender roles, gender roles. Do you think that young men watching these podcasts, okay, which are man centric, it's about, you know, alpha males teaching young men how to be strong male figures. Do you really think that they want to sit here talking about gender roles? No, they don't. But the problem is, is that when you have three honeypots, because that's what they are, honeypots, okay, young men, what are they thinking about? They're thinking about sex. And you've got someone who calls herself a whole lawyer, that's self-proclaimed again, sitting there with her breasts completely out. What man is thinking about what Michael Knowles is saying? They're not. No young boy is, no man from any age, zero to 100. They're thinking about, wow, her breasts are really luscious. I wonder what I can do to sleep with her, right? They're creating confusion, creating confusion. So there was a famous debate between Betty Friedan, who was the prominent American feminist, and Simone de Beauvoir, one of the most famous feminists of the 20th century. It was in 1975, and Betty Friedan said what you said. She said, look, I think we should give women a choice. To, maybe they want to go out into the workplace, or maybe they want to stay home and raise their kids, but they should have a choice. And Simone de Beauvoir, who was a more consistent and intelligent feminist, said there can't be a choice. And the reason there can't be a choice is that if given the choice, most women would stay at home. And if most women stay at home, women will not be free. If we want true women's liberation, women must be forced to be free. But when it comes to... Pretty crazy what he just said, right, about Simone, uh, because that's how we forced everyone out. You don't give them a choice. They sit around here preaching choice, women's choice. No, they're taking the choices away from women, actually, with feminism. They're pushing you to have to work, to have to do things, okay? Just a, just a quiet point. And here we go again. Here's Pixie. When it comes to our roles in society, and I think this is what feminists push back on, it seems like instead of it being a real biological imperative, it is forced upon the social structure. Yeah. I, are you suggesting that women are as happy working in an office as a man is? Um, they could be. Depends on the woman. Hypothetically, I guess they could be. But do you think talking to your female friends and looking at what social scientific data there are, you really think women are as satisfied and happy in some. office work? I definitely I, I'm think just saying some. in the aggregate. Yeah, I if think... If you're really being honest with me right now, I think you would say probably women are less happy. Well, I don't think either wait, of them wait, are wait, happy. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> like, yeah, I think but most which is happier are not than happy. the other? Yeah, which no. Is happier than well, the, what I think is interesting about this argument is that we do have like a clear period of time where, hey, you know, women had, were staying at home, whatever. Then when the went men went out to war, they went towards these jobs. And when the men came back, they didn't want to leave. So to me, to be saying like, oh no, like, you know, they are all in general happier at home. Well, we had a clear period of time where we women did. We fought did. expressly right. against that. No, we did. And then we... By the way, now that's a well-trained narrative here. You get it? All of them are well-trained. There's nobody that's going to convince me otherwise. They have an answer for everything. Michael says this, they say that. Michael says this, they say that. She says one thing and they bounce off of each other, okay? And meanwhile, young men are sitting here listening to 
pixie looking like a little innocent girl. Think about it. Let's go back for a second. The prior clip where I introduced you to who Gloria Steinem was, what did he, what was he saying? The idea of feminism was you can be a man, you can dress like a man. It's there's no man though. Everybody's equal and the same, right? All equal, equal, equal. So why aren't they putting people that look like Rachel Maddow sitting there, right? No, they don't do that. They don't put a masculine girl that wants to be a man sitting on a man's podcast saying, oh, hey, yeah, you know what? I want equal rights. I want to work on the bridge. No, they put three beauties with their breasts out going like this. And well, I think feminism could be doing this. I mean, when you talk like this and here are the boys watching going, well, you know, maybe she's right a little bit because they're thinking... Can I acquiesce a little bit? They're, they're going to acquiesce because all they're thinking about is forget about Michael. They don't even hear him. They are thinking about how can I sleep with one of these three beautiful girls? How can I get into their pants? I know how. Let me just agree. Well, on one point, maybe two. And then look where we're at. Look where we're at. It's brilliant. And what they're doing is dangerous. And none of these people realize it. All of these Manosphere podcasts keep bringing them on over and over and over again. You're going to see. You're going to see. Gun stop. No, we did. And then we, we, as I mentioned earlier, we measured against it. And <laughs> we measured how it turned out. And all but one of the surveys showed that the women became less happy. So I, I'm, I'm totally willing to well, take these surveys with a grain of salt. But in as much as we can measure them, they undercut your argument. Also, yeah. to go back to happiness and feminism and girl bosses and females in the workspace, another reason that women could have lower reported happiness is because they're still showing or shoring up on most of the household duties, despite now also right. taking up, a, you know what I mean? They're doing still a lion share. Don't have domestic work. They don't get married anyway, so they don't even have households. That's not true. They're still they're still cohabitating. They're still yeah, e even within marriage. That, I agree. Even cohabitation makes women unhappy too. Yeah. I mean, even within marriage now, you don't think a majority of there's a ton of marriages in which women are also working and then also shoring up a lion's share of the household duties, yeah. and that's why they're unhappy because now they're being burdened in two directions. Yeah, sure. Being burdened in two directions. What do you mean? You pushed feminism. You wanted to be in the workplace. Pixie just said it. Now you're complaining because you have to do household duties. So, I mean, do you get where, do you, do you see how this, the confusion here? Now men are supposed to do the household duties too, which is what she's saying. Women can't do it all. Women are unhappy. You got what you asked for. You wanted to be in the workplace. You're in the workplace. Now what? But so what's the solution to that? I think the solution, the, I think the, the solution, solution is men showing up more on domestic duties, but they won't because of freaking trad cons and neocons who are telling them that no, it's gay and beta if they do these certain tasks. It is, it is gay and beta. <laughs> and that's where you are at. Okay. That's the whole point of this. They're trying to effeminate men. They want to feminize men within this space. Now she's saying Men should show up and start doing some of these female household duties. But no, because all the trad cons um, in the space say that it's gay and beta and blah, blah, blah. And Michael's like, it is gay and beta. But again, somebody that wants to sleep with this cutie here with the glasses on, right? Some little uh, boy's wet dream is going to say, well, maybe I should do the dishes. You know, if I can, if I do the dishes, will I be able to get her? You see? In it, is, it is gay and beta. Yeah. Do you agree with I like? I don't think that Richard Reeves' you don't take what? on you don't like what? men should be the way we pushed point. women to join STEM. We should be pushing men to join HEAL, which is health, education, administrative, literacy jobs. Like, do you think that there should be a push? Like, instead of saying men do this job and women do this job, like I don't think track cons do as much as like red pillar. I'm not pointing to you say you're red pillar, but yeah. like that men, your role is to be an ATM machine and to make money and like, to be strong and fight. And if you don't do that, then you're not a man. Like you're not as much of a man if you're a teacher. Sure. Do you do you agree with that? No, I have. Okay. Now here here we go. See, one takes one section, Pixie takes another, and here we go with Jasmine Jafar. Now she's saying taking it even further. Forget about just men helping out with the household duties. Now men should be nurses and 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 you know cleaning ladies and teachers and all the effeminate things that men do not normally do. Get it? It's like they just blur the lines. They are trying to feminize men in a man's space through a man's space because they're infiltrating a man's space, causing confusion.
if you're a teacher, do you, do you agree with that? No, I've I've had wonderful male teachers. You know, I I don't really care to push people to any particular field or other. I think uh, I'm not no libertarian, but I think the market will generally sort that out. And and I think interference in that regard is usually does more harm than good. But uh, no, a man, but you know, teaching is a very manly thing, actually. You know, I mean, it's uh, you're imparting wisdom and knowledge and you're, you know, shaping a young mind. It's a very manly field. I agree. But you said women are better at domestic tasks than men are. And being a a teacher or a nurse is not a domestic task. It can be. It can occur inside the home and frequently does. But so why does it seem like? Why do you? Do, why do domestic means within the home? No, so but why do people outside? see it as feminine? Like people see nurses and teachers as feminine. Like a third very grade nur- male teacher. Very nurturing. Yeah. So it's that. And what Michael is saying about male teachers, he's talking about higher grades. He's talking about professors in college, okay? You're not talking about changing diapers or or, or cleaning up after a kindergartner that wet his pants in school or a first grader that you're saying A, B, C, D. Okay, no, no. Now don't do that, Jonathan. It's not nice to hit. That's what a woman is supposed to do, okay? Women are nurturers. They're supposed to raise the children, okay? That's how that works, He's not talking about professors. How many female professors really are there? I mean, I don't know, but let's think about it. It's a very masculine job. So is that something that you think is better suited for women? Yeah, I think women tend to be more nurturing than men. But so that's because yeah. of their experience in the domestic life. Is that's why they're now more concerned with these nature. burgeoning industries such as nursing, teaching, childcare, hospitality, food preparation. It's because of what they're being trained to do at the home. So when trad cons say that like men should focus on public life while women should focus on these more domestic errands, they're actually hurting men in the long run because now men aren't equipped to do these burgeoning industries. No, to work I, in look, them. I think also, you know, don't forget life isn't just... Now that was a robot speaking. You, you understand that, right? Everything that comes out of these women's mouths is scripted. They are just memorizing talking points. It, you can see it. They act like robots. There's no emotion. There's no nothing. We're this, we're this, we're that. I think and then the other one and all these men are doing this. the girls are doing this and they're just looking at their breasts. That's it. Going, yep, yeah, I'll do the dishes. I'll do whatever you want. What do you want me to do? Okay, I'll wear the skirt. A dress? Fine. Um, can I sleep over? You see? See what they're doing? Oh, I, look, I, I think also, you know, don't forget, life isn't just set and, and static all the time. A woman could, uh, say, go to school and then work a job. You know, I don't know, she teaches for a few years and then mm-hmm. she gets married and she wants to leave teach, or she's a nurse for a few years or what, you know. We're not, we don't just like sign up like serfs for the rest of our lives. We're just doing one task. But I do think that it's not just a matter of social construction. I think women are more nurturing. And so are nurses more likely to be women? You know it. Are elementary school teachers more likely to be women? Yes. But there are wait, some men. There, that's, that's interesting to say because when we look historically like the reason why women tended to take those roles is because those were the only roles that society would let them take it was not so says you i don't really buy that that that, by the way okay we've gotten where we need to go on this clip but i just want to make a comment quickly on what pixie is saying this is another thing that they continue to do every time somebody like a michael knowles or somebody with a more conservative or forget conservative just practical, okay? Common sense perspective comes along and says, well, you know, women don't really build the George Washington Bridge and skyscrapers and usually men do those tasks. Oh no, Pixie will say, oh, well, that's because we weren't allowed to, because we weren't offered those jobs. We weren't offered those positions. Well, you know what? The feminist movement happened how long ago? Show me a city that has been built solely by women. Show me a bridge that was built solely by women. I'm talking start to finish. You can't because it doesn't exist. Because if you come to New York City, which is where I reside in Manhattan, the only women on construction sites, okay, are the ones holding the signs that say do not cross. That's equality. Meanwhile, they're getting paid the same though. They're getting paid the same. Just saying. Okay, we are starting to, are we starting to have fun here yet? Because I'm starting to have fun. Now, we are going to get into a little more of my favorite Gloria Steinem. Now, the next clip I am going to show you is one of my favorites. This is Gloria Steinem. You are going to see her now, okay? Describing her time as a CIA operative right out of the horse's mouth. Don't take my words for it.
Well, exactly when did your own association with the CIA start and in what fashion? Did they Before she answers that, which I'm going to bring it back anyway, take a look at her. This is Gloria Steinem in her younger years. As I mentioned earlier, she is still alive, but this is her. Is this what you thought? The feminist Rosie the Riveter and oh, I'm saving the world. Is this what you thought she would be? Take a look at this. She's a honeypot. What is the difference between Gloria Steinem back in her time, which she's probably close to the age of these three young ladies? What is the difference? There is no difference. Okay. Is it so far-fetched once again that those three ladies could be CIA operatives that are infiltrating the manosphere? No, it's not. Could I be right? Yes, and I'm probably right. Well, exactly when did your own association with the CIA start and in what fashion? Did they come to in, you or did you go to them? In 1958, when I came home from, from India, I discussed with student leaders, past and present, uh, many of them active with the National Student Association, uh, this kind of small foundation to encourage Americans to go. They thought it was a good idea, too. It was at that point that the student leaders said to me that they had in the past received funds for international programs from the CIA and that they felt that this was important and could also be partly funded by the CIA. So what she's saying is, is that somebody from who knows where, her college or something, an association can, dealing with the school, told her that, oh, well, I, you want to bring other people there. Well, guess what? You know what? The CIA funds things like that. And this is important, what you've experienced. So you should probably go to the CIA and get funding for that. I mean, did you feel that you really tried? I mean, did you go around to all of the wealthy found mm -hmm. private foundations, uh, wealthy private people and, and explain your point of view and, and explain why you felt it was important that the United States be represented at these things in a certain way. What did they tell you? Uh, they told me that, well, the Ford Foundation, for instance, told me that they thought we were uh, too liberal and too controversial. And the, the private individuals to whom I went uh, often had uh, particular points of view to put forward which would have been much, much more restricting than, than uh, the CIA funds were, which were free. I mean, no one was told what to say. What do you mean they were free? You mean to say it was easier for you to work for the CIA than a private That's organization? That's right. That's right. Now, hold on. Let me, let, me, let me just stop here real quick. So let's say you go somewhere overseas and you, you, know, you got a scholarship and you went to India. Let's just use the same scenario. I went to India and I had an amazing time and my experience was grand. And I came back home and I said, you know what? I need to start some kind of scholarship program or some kind of organization to give other students the opportunity to do the same. Now, if I was going to do that, okay, do you think I would say, oh, geez, let me go down to the FBI or the CIA or Homeland Security and ask them to fund the money so that I can allow other students in my classes in college to go and do the same thing I did? Really? Do you realize how insane what she's actually saying is? And then she's saying that I went to the wealthy people and they told me, no, I was crazy. Yeah, which is true because you were. Because when she came back and told them why she wanted Ford, the Ford Foundation, which told her she was a lunatic and no, we're not giving you any money. Okay, she had no other options, right? But we all know is that she was already working for the CIA when she was in India. That's actually why she was there. You understand? Now, let's move forward. And, and the the reason I think that comes as a surprise, as it did to me at the time. I mean, I had uh, the conventional liberals view of the CIA as a right wing incendiary group, and I was amazed to discover that this was far from the case. That they were enlightened, liberal, nonpartisan activists of the sort who characterized the Kennedy administration. I have to stop. I have to. Do you see how she is describing the actual CIA from back then? She is saying that she was actually surprised to find out that once she started working with the CIA, that they were nothing of the sort that she would have imagined, which she's saying would have been a right-wing incendiary group. Oh no, they were 
Radical liberals. Radical liberals. So when the when the story broke that I had once been that I have for four years been a central intelligence agent, I was demonstrating outside the Pentagon underneath Mr. McNamara's office against bombing in Vietnam, and uh, this didn't precisely fit with the image of a CIA agent. But then, neither does the CIA. Didn't precisely fit with the image of a CIA agent, but neither did the CIA. Very interesting words there. Very interesting words. Okay, now you heard it out of the horse's mouth. Gloria Steinem herself describing her time as a CIA operative. Do not forget, we have Farah Khalidi, who worked for four years. That seems to be the mark, right? She was a four-year operative CIA agent. And now Farah Khalidi worked for Gloria Steinem's uh, organization for four years. And now again, she is sitting amongst all of these manospheric, man-centric podcasts pushing feminism. How strange. Now, let's go back to Pixie. And now I'm going to take you to another clip of Fresh and Fit. To the end, but we kind of got here qu quicker. Why do y'all feel like women should be equals? Mm. That is my problem with feminists. Why do you want to be equal to a man? It's and here we go. Like I said earlier, we were on the whatever podcast talking about feminism, and now here we are on Fresh and Fit, and the conversation once again is feminism. Why do y'all want men and women to be equals? Pretty interesting. I would let them answer. Good, because uh, we have some. Who, who identifies as a feminist on the panel? These two. Two? The fucking okay. <laughs> oh, oh, that too. Uh, you guys don't identify as feminists? No. I know you have some conservative views. No. Very you are? conservative. No, no. Okay. No, you're not. It's, okay. These two. I, I literally am conservative. Is that a conservative, conservative and not a cleavage? Okay. <laughs> that wasn't right. a very conservative go ahead. titty shape. Uh, you guys can go ahead and uh, answer. Okay. I don't think women and men are equal. There she is. Pixie. Look at her looking as innocent as pie, right? Cool in everything. I think that there's some aspects of society that should be a little bit more fair, um, but that's basically it. Like, I just want those aspects in society where I'm like, hey, you know, like we talked about the shoulds earlier. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? I think men and women should both be responsible for their children. That's what I believe in. So you're, not, you're, not a whole, you're not a whole feminist. You're like a cherry picker. You want to <laughs> you wanna pick what you want to be a feminist well, about. Because being a feminist means you want it to be equal. You want men and women. We want equals. I, not, yeah, not I, want equal, I want equals where it should be. That's where I'm about. I'm like the shoulds. Yeah, where like should equity. society go? Yeah, but that's like doing equal. Uh, that's like sharing a group project with our retard, right? Like if you think about it, it's been thousands and thousands and thousands of years, thousands of years, and you women have still not produced one genius, one Plato, Socrates, Pythagoras, Mary, zero. It's been thousands yeah. of years. We don't want to do the group project anymore. All right, get out of our group. All right. What By the way, that is Zerka, a very, very big podcaster. And the young gentleman in the white shirt next to him, that's Sneeko, another massive, massive podcaster. Notice how this girl, Pixie, manages to just put herself around the top, top, top people in this space. I mean, they're not like down the block in, you know, uh, uh, Omaha, Kansas, you know, Wichita, Kansas, whatever, sitting at somebody's on somebody's couch doing a little friendly podcast talking about feminism. Oh, no, she ends up somehow. God only knows how she's traveling. I mean, you're, you're all the way in California. Now you're in Miami. I mean, how, you, who's funding this? How are you all over the place constantly next to the absolute top voices in the manosphere in the red pill. Okay. You tell me. It's been thousands yeah. of years. We don't want to do the group project anymore. All right. <laughs> Get out of our group. All right. What about you? Uh, do, um, for the feminist question. Why and there she is again with her little notepad. Like I said, there's Pixie taking her notes. Question. Why do you th want things to be equal? Yeah. I want things to be equitable. There's like a this girl speaking with the black hair. She's another one that jumps from podcast to podcast to podcast. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, whatever fresh and fit Rolo, everywhere you go, we see the same hoes. I don't get it. 
the difference between like equal feminism or like liberal feminism and there's also like other feminists that argue for equity like from each according to their ability to each according to their need and i think i see more compelling reasons for women to have the same amount of status that like men enjoy in society than i see like cons against it but for military you guys don't even have to do five fucking pull-ups bro you ain't saving no one's life we're not taking you in a combat role you can't do one fucking pull-up and you're still considered soldier girl if anything go be a human shield we don't need you in the fucking military (laughs) you can't do one pull-up and they're a navy seal now we're not doing that quality shit you're getting us killed out there a lot of positions in the military are paper pushing if you're going to talk about like navy seals and the elite of the elite for like physical stuff like yeah that should be men or whatever but that's what i'm talking about equity like to you see my problem to, with feminism to be fair y'all can though, even really agree on what the fuck feminism is his, his his claim claim to have, like, that all feminists agree there's like lots We're of not different types mind. of i, I want to ask you a personal okay, question here's sneeko here's sneeko now notice how that other girl called her out now the other thing quickly that i just want to want you to think about is that you know the women in general that show up to like let's just talk about the whatever podcast and fashion fit okay right? And even, even Access Vegas or any of that stuff, right? They are usually women that are only fans prostitutes that are looking to not work because they want to find a, what they would call high value, rich man. Okay. So the women that show up to these things are totally the antithesis of what Pixie and these other feminists are pushing because these women that want to find rich men, they don't want to work. They don't want anything equal. They don't want equality. They want to lay out like a princess and have everything handed to them. You, like, none of this makes any sense, okay? A personal question for the two feminists. You've been on the show a lot. You've been around on a lot of these podcasts. Why do you, you think- hear what he said? You've been on the show a lot. This is Sneeko talking. You've been around a lot of these podcasts. See, he's confirming it for me for the two feminists. You've been on the show a lot. You've been around on a lot of these podcasts. Why do you think your stream hasn't popped off yet? Ooh. I barely streamed. Barely started oh, streaming. Wow. No, 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 no. Here, I'll answer. Last time you saw the show it. was months ago, and you said you were going to start live streaming like you don't have a job. Okay. What are you doing all day? No, I have Ooh. another job. I just don't want to say it publicly, not because it's shameful, but because I want to end up working in corporate America, and I don't want people to start sending these podcasts to like a corporation. Right. Oh, oh, that's that's why you're sucking. Why, why do you think Hold they? On. Did you hear Pixie? She has another job. She has another job, but she doesn't want to say it publicly. Well, what is that job? Could it possibly be a CIA informant? I don't know. Just saying. Do you think that your stream hasn't popped off yet? The last time I was on the show, I wasn't trying to become a live streamer. I only like recently decided that in the last couple of weeks. So my show hasn't popped off yet because I, mean, I literally haven't had the time to like start that career yet. Sure. That's it. It's not that much time. It's like a couple hours a day. I mean, the, the harsh I said weeks though. I'm talking like it takes like how long did it take for you to build your platform? You were on YouTube for years, dude. Yeah, I know. I started how live long streaming. did it take before you, like you got your like, live streaming? Million? I started live streaming one year ago. I got you started high. live streaming after you already established a YouTube career though. So that took years in the making, and then she's you're, right. You're, I, she's, you're not like me who did. Half, he's not like me who did half a million views overnight <laughs> on my first. Now, again, that one with the dark hair. Okay, how does she know all of this about Sneeko? He's calling them out because he's saying you girls don't do anything. You show up. It's not like you're promoting your page because none of their pages are worthy of anything. You go on Pixie. It's Pixie underscore Love on YouTube, and you know it's all about her on everybody else's set. Meanwhile, she sits on a bed and tries to live stream and she's got like 20 views, 30 views, okay? Nobody cares. Nobody wants to see it. No one cares because they're not good at anything except showing up and infiltrating these spaces. Now, this girl over here, it's like she has a whole profile on Sneeko. He's calling her out and Pixie out. Why Why do you have nothing going on except the fact that you jump from podcast to podcast infiltrating us? And she's like, what do you mean? It took you X amount of time. She knows every step of his career, how long it took before he started streaming, how long it took before he got famous, blah, blah, blah. You hear her? A whole profile on her. You know, here's here's the thing I want to make. This is very important what I'm about to say. We know nothing about these girls. They just popped up out of nowhere, okay? People like Pearl, okay? Call her what you want. Pearl has an origin story. We saw it. We saw her 
in the room, on the couch, whatever, with the folding chairs, with the fold-out table, we saw her grow. We know Pearl has a rich father. You know, say her rich daddy paid for it all. You know, call her a grifter. Call her whatever you want. The point is, is that we saw where it started and where it ended, okay? There's a trajectory there. These women... All of a sudden, you're just on Sazcast. You're on 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 Fresh and Fit. You're on whatever podcast. You're on Rolo, Access Vegas. You're on uh, Patrick Vin David. How? Who are you that your voice is so important that you're like becoming actually the voices of the manosphere? This is nuts. <laughs> on my first day with no game release, okay. I just exhaled in a microphone. But your cope podcast, keep it going. Right, you guys will. Be the, the harsh realization is helpful. like, even though you guys are good at arguing and everything, you're going to slowly realize that the only value you really add is arguing with men. Is breaking us down. Is yeah, like that point. Up, low key. Is asking questions and <laughs> going here and arguing with us. Low key, the harsh realization is like when you actually stream on your own. If you don't have your titties out or there's no OnlyFans funnel, if you're not extremely attractive, nobody's going to want to watch you. Like women are going to want to watch it. Arguing men with gonna, men is the same as here. What Sneeko is saying, he's saying that no one wants to watch you, okay? Unless your breasts are out and you look hot and all, you don't really, you, nobody cares. I mean, like you're in a space that no one really cares. You have no value, right? Except these things. And which is what is actually the truth. Because again, if you look at Pixie's page, there's nothing there. It's all about her just being hot and disrupting the red pill movement. They are watering down these man-centric spaces. They are watering down the message, which is the most important part. Again, here we go. It's every podcast we know. Whatever fresh and fit Rolo, the only fans we know, they be the same hoes. What is this, George Soros funded? Are you with gonna... men is the same as like breaking them down? You think that like women trying to like challenge you and debate you is breaking you down? There's no chance that any of us here would ever talk to you about this extensively if it was not being monetized. <laughs> no no like, and that's the scary part, fellas. Gentlemen, Sneeko, what he is saying is that the only reason why you're allowing these honeypots to infiltrate your spaces is because it's being monetized, because it's clickbait, because it works. Is that smart? Is that smart? Probably not. What am I saying that's wrong? Like, Wait, no, nobody it's, in it's here would crazy. engage with you for this long. I, You're like, the foil no, no, characters no, no, no. to make us look like, smart. Do you think cool. I really want to sit here for hours no. and argue by why the exception is not the rule? Same like here. For hours and hours? It's yeah, content. Same, same like, here. It's, it's never going to happen. Content. I don't disagree with you. But it's the whole content. point is you're never no, going to be able to do your own stream. What's it? Well, Without I've this, done, I've you done just have to argue with men. I've done my own shoes before, but I just want to bring up the fact that I think it's funny that you're saying like, oh, I'm trying to like break down men when earlier I've been saying, and in my previous appearances too, hey, I think men are capable i think men should be responsible and their men are capable <laughs> guys who is pixie to be saying that men are capable why does her opinion on men even matter men are capable oh because pixie said it oh okay got it capable of re being responsible but i mean that, that's the bigger point is that like you're only going to be able to add value when we roast you or when your arguments get debunked but like when you sit there alone and there's no men around to go and just like nah, 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 nobody's going to want to watch Wait, why you do you invite female guests on your stream then because it's content it's easy but you but do you think they add value to your content yeah. it's funny when they get made fun but of and they say stupid they stuff value adding content. value by not knowing three countries if that's value then sure but like it's just funny but i don't think that's what you invite women on your stream to do <laughs> right. yeah it is Name countries, really? Are... Wouldn't you say, what, like, why? Because it's fun. It's the funny for the men to watch it and be like, yo, this is what women are actually like. So if yeah, you have women, would you still provide value? Yeah, I, I stream today without a woman. It's just me talking to my camera. Great. Yeah, I've also born. streamed without At, talking to how's men. How's it going? It, it goes pretty well. I just haven't done it consistently because I have another job. Well, Pixie hasn't done it consistently because she has another job. Now, now I'm going to show you a little example of what Pixie's other job may look like. Let's get into it. In the summer of 1978, I interviewed a man who worked as an informer for the FBI during the 1960s. His name is Dothard Perry, also known as Ed Riggs, also known as Bill Perry, also known as Othello. How were you paid? The pay was always in cash cash and you would sign a card 
It would go like this. A rendezvous or a drop-off point would be picked out either by yourself or the agent. You would meet the agent there. And usually it would be in a vehicle. You get in the vehicle, he would hand you the money. He would tell you first to count the money. You also were active in the infiltration of uh, many cultural groups. We Did you hear that? First of all, this is an FBI informant describing, number one, how he got paid, which was always in cash. Hmm, I don't know. How's Pixie getting across the country? How are all these women getting across the country? I mean, are they all just independently wealthy? How does that work? Okay. And did you notice the key word? Infiltrate. Infiltrate. This is an FBI informant. One of his names was Othello. He's talking about how he infiltrated organizations. It's dangerous, people. Very dangerous. Before we go into that step by step, how much research and study did the FBI engage in of black culture in the late 60s? A great amount. Give me an idea. Uh, from the thing is, I, I, I can, uh, they have a file on every type of magazine. Uh, the blacks read, they have a file on, on, on the music. They make in-depth in -depth studies of the personalities of the people they're dealing with, too, uh, uh, culturally. It always helps. when you. Uh, it's the thing of, you can take their culture and use it against them. A file. He is describing how the FBI, and this is an informant, that's speaking here, right out of the horse's mouth again, has a file on all of these people. Now, let's think about this. These girls consistently show up from podcast to podcast to podcast with notepads. They're taking notes. They're, they're re I mean, I don't understand this. Why are you taking notes at every single podcast you're on? Are you creating files? I mean, when you're on the whatever podcast, let's say, are you you know, assessing Brian, looking at his behavior, you know, is it clean in here? What is Madison doing? Are they in love? Are they dating, you think? I mean, let's look at Michael Knowles. Did his wife show up? Was he late? Was he on time? Did he drink water? Does he like Coca-Cola? Is he looking at your colleagues' breasts? They are profiling you. These girls are profiling you. That's why they show up looking the way they do, behaving the way they do, taking notes. They're creating files on you. Nobody is going to tell me any different. That against them. Was part of your other activities and responsibilities to uh, study the profiles of celebrities who were supportive of uh, organizations? Definitely. And especially, like I said, psychological backgrounds, weaknesses and strengths psychological backgrounds, weaknesses, and strengths. <laughs> Guys, you are getting fooled by these honeypots. This is nuts. This is, this is nuts. This is a movement that the country does not want because the people running things, they don't want masculine alpha males. They don't want it. They want to keep you down here. They don't want you fighting back. They don't want you coming up with any bright ideas and they don't want you leading women because they need the women. Did he have a weakness for blondes? Did he have a weakness for money? Did he snort cocaine? Uh, did he smoke marijuana? Uh, uh, they even get into, oh, and that was one thing the Bureau loves is this sexual background. Uh, they have files and files on different blacks, not only celebrities, but a lot of others, uh, sexual activity. What would they do with this information? Oh, that's used as a weakness. So they would feed these to these weaknesses? Yes. They would feed to their weaknesses. Sexual backgrounds? Se Let's think about this. You've got Pixie, you've got Farah Khalidi, and you've got Jasmine, right? Two, three totally different things. I mean, you're sitting across from somebody like Michael Knowles. Hey, you're giving him three options. What are the chances? Chances are high, right? He's going to like one. Pretty nuts.
Would you say to American citizens that this situation of surveillance and infiltration continues to this day? Oh, yes. On the dimension that you experienced? Probably much larger by now. Larger? Oh, yeah. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me put it to you like this. Each year, everything gradually escalated up more and more. So I figured uh, when I left, it, it didn't stop escalating. As they say, one monkey does not stop anybody's show. Well, he said it. One monkey does not stop anybody's show. Now, let me just tell you a little other key factor. That FBI informant who one of his names was Othello, he was one of the key people to take down the Black Panthers. Okay? The Black Panthers. Now, I am going to show you once again, Pixie, on Sazcast, talking about Sneeko, who you just saw her sitting across from on Fresh and Fit. Pay close attention to how she describes him. I'm sure some of you guys have done content. He blocked me on Was Sneeko before? He blocked you. <laughs> no, Pixie. Right? Why did he block you? Because <laughs> I called him out for being a hypocrite. <laughs> what did you say? Um, he talks about how people shouldn't take drugs. He's on Adderall, um, which I don't think is you should. If you have ADHD, you have ADHD. But it's one thing to be like saying nobody should be taking it. It's a drug for the weak minded and then doing it yourself. He talks about being religious, but like he doesn't practice any Muslim values. I'm pretty sure he hasn't read more than two pages of the Quran. Um, he just purports all these values. I even know like on a personal level, he tells people like, oh no, it's just like for the, basically for the grift. Um, I think he's a huge grifter. Okay, so there you have it. Pixie on Sazcast giving an entire profile, okay? An entire profile on Sneeko. Now we just heard Othello, the FBI informant, describing how important it was to collect all this information. Behavior, do they do they like money? What kind of women do they like? What's their sexual activity? Are they on drugs? What are their weaknesses? And here she is, and she's already established that she's been in his presence. Here she is giving an entire profile of him, calling him a liar, saying that, you know, he takes Adderall when he tells others not to. He he claims he's religious, but he doesn't know more than two pages of the Quran. It's like, how does she know all of this? And why is she on a major podcast like Sazcast giving this information out, basically discrediting him, calling him a liar? Now, we just saw her on Sazcast, right? Giving the whole profile. Now I'm going to show you how she got that profile. Here is a clip of Pixie actually in Sneeko's home. Well, I just asked you like three times in a row, like, what What's does masculinity mean to you? What, is ma what does masculinity mean to you? She's just asked him this three times in a row. Now, take a look who's sitting next to her. That's the other girl that was previously with her on Fresh and Fit. Okay? She had a whole profile on Sneeko as well. Ask you, what's the definition of masculinity? No, what does it mean no, to you? Like you kept saying like, oh, you know, we believe in masculinity mm -hmm. here. Like, yeah, we wanted to just know the dictionary definition. We would have just looked it up. But like, we want to know what you think specifically. Come on, didn't you guys? Listen, they're asking him what he specifically thinks. What is his definition of masculinity? Now, take a look what's going on. You see that chat? He's live. He's live right now on his stream. And, and they're in his house. And by the way, the blue haired gentleman sitting behind them is Destiny. What is Destiny doing there? Why are they in this kid's house? You think specifically. Come on, didn't you guys do this? Running around screaming like, what is a woman? What is a woman? What is a woman? Somebody's asking a question. What does masculinity mean to you? Masculinity is taking personal responsibility, is having testosterone, is being a provider as a man, is doing what you're supposed to do as a man. Those things what make you a masculine man. What, what does doing what you have to do as a man mean? Like that doesn't, that doesn't really tell me anything. That just means like, oh, being a man is being a man. But mm -hmm. like, we are not really describing what being a man Protecting is. Protecting and providing and being responsible for other people makes you a man. And you don't think, well, you do you think women are capable of protecting and providing and being responsible for other people? They're responsible in different ways, but their role, the feminine role is to nurture and be the spiritual balance. Their role is not to protect and provide. I'm not going to trust a woman to protect and provide for me. I would 
Why is he even answering these questions on his own live stream? Okay. First of all, the men, the boys, the guys, whatever, watching Sneeko, they already know the definition of masculinity. Okay. <laughs> they don't need to hear it again. But what they're doing is they're, they're confusing the young males watching Sneeko. They're confusing it. They're, they're diluting it. They're, they're putting confusion into his stream. And look at them. Pixie has pigtails on. She's sitting there all innocent. Meanwhile, the other one is, you know, she's got her cleavage out and whatnot. She's the antithesis. It's always opposite. You notice that one gothic, one little, you know, sweet girl next door. And she has practically nothing on. I mean, her skirt is like up to her, you know what, distracting them. So again, the guys on his stream, what do you think they're, what do you think they're doing right now? They're thinking, hmm, well, well, yeah, it could sneak. Oh, what is your definition of masculinity? I mean, she kind of has a point, you know, I mean, you get it? Because all they're thinking about is how can I get in their pants? Feel unsafe all the time. Okay. I just think that's kind of interesting because you're saying, oh no, that's, why do you think it's that the roles are so separate like that when they seem to have a lot of overlap? Mm -hmm. Right. When you say like protect, providing, the first thing I think about is mothers, right? That's like what a mother is known to do. Yet you describe that these things seem to be exclusively or mainly masculine, even though it seems like there's this huge overlap. Yeah, I protect and Come on, it's common sense. Is what she's saying even worthy of anything, really? Protect in a different way. When I talk about protecting, providing, I mean providing like bringing bread to the dinner table. When I mean protecting, I mean being able to go fight off an intruder. I wouldn't trust you. Um, I think that you are weaker than me in, in every way, and I would not trust you if an intruder came in. You mean physically weaker? Yes. Well, duh. What do you think? <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Just that, though. Yeah. I am well, when you say every way, like physically, physically mentally, mentally like, as well, do you mean mentally? I mean, women get emotional quicker when a fight goes down. The first thing a woman does is start screaming, and that's her that's her line of defense. She goes, "Oh my God, stop!" But a man's responsibility is to I get physical. Some emotional men. Um, Actually, you know something? Notice? Do you, do you notice that what he's saying is normally true, right? But not with these women. Not with these women. They don't ever get too emotional. They're always composed. I've never had yeah, I know, but the, the exception doesn't make the rule. See, this is why she days and like people like you start popping up because they see one exception. Like, I know a strong woman, and then you classify that as all women. No, but if, if, if you're general, an anecdote, then like I can throw an anecdote. That's back not an anecdote. That, like, that's not an anecdote. This is generally oh, so all studies. women. And mm -hmm. are you really going to act like men aren't physically stronger than women? I never said that. Did so I say what that? do you need to study? You want you want to study just to, to, for no, me? No, no, no. You? you said, oh, you know, men are more logical. Like women. You How about me and you arm wrestle right now? Do you feel like you have to like assert your masculinity? Well, you want to study, we could do it. I'm not trying to assert no, masculinity. I'm trying to prove to you, you. No, that, no, no, like, if, if you want to study, we could do a study. No, all I asked you was like, hey, you know, like you're going to say men are more logical, but you don't, you're not really backing this up with facts. You're just saying how you feel. You feel men are more logical. Mm -hmm. And then the first thing you responded was, let's arm wrestle. Like, what does that have what to do with the logical? I said? When did I say logical? Earlier, you said, oh, you know, like, women on average are more emotional and, like, men are logical. I didn't say that. And, and, and women on average are not more emotional. We all know that that's the case, okay? It's called behavior. It's called women, okay? They're more emotional, men are not. <clears throat> and here we go. She is trying to feminize him by asking him these questions. At the same time, getting his entire stream to fall in love with her and kind of acquiesce to some of her ideas so that they could possibly sleep with her or the girl in school that looks like her or that resembles her or, or blah, blah, blah. Get it? I feel like that was emotional on your part emotional. that you feel like in order to like demonstrate your masculinity immediately, you're like fucking arm wrestling. Wrestle me. Well, you said you want to do a study and- Well, I'm is, saying is, you're gonna is say doing an arm wrestle a study? I'm yeah, we, we could do an example right now. No, I'm a man, no. you're a she I'm they. If you're going to say, oh, women are more emotional or whatever, on average, I wish you had like some sort of like data to back this up other than I feel women are more emotional. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish there was just something more you can give me than anecdotal. A man and everybody watching this, we're supposed to be stoic and we're supposed to push that emotion to the side. Women aren't expected to have that same emotional maturity to be able to be rational in situations that are dangerous. Men, you're expected to be 
calm, level-headed, and be able to handle it. If you start acting emotional, then they call you childish. But a woman can start to freak out and cry, and then that's expected of her. We have different expectations. This shit sucks. I hate this. <laughs> like, bro, this conversation is like, <laughs> I don't like being, it's good for stream, but like, I would never be around this like freely. I wouldn't spend time with women like this. You see what he's saying? He would never spend time on his stream discussing this or spend time with women like this, period especially on a stream. Now they're frustrating him on his own live stream in front of his whole audience, okay? They're confusing the space again. It's like a man is a woman, a woman is a man. Uh, men, men go through this, men go through that. Women are the same. I mean, it's all over the place. And no matter what he says, they cannot just say, yeah, that's logical. You know, men are physically stronger than women. No, they have to come in with another thing and come in with another thing and come in with another thing. And then you've got Destiny over there on his phone taking notes. That's his notepad. And just listening to the whole thing. I mean, who is Destiny? Could he possibly be, I don't know, working for Homeland Security? Or maybe he's working for the FBI as an informant or CIA. Or maybe he's in charge of these two operatives. It's possible. It's not far-fetched. I wouldn't want to go on a date like this. I would not spend time with you if I wasn't making content out of this. So you wanted to blue pill me. What do you have well, to say I besides to these have questions? A conversation about gender, and you keep just saying this is. It's just how it so is. So what conversation do you want to have? Because I keep trying to ask you like questions about like women being emotional. Like where's your line of logic? And your line of logic is none. It's literally this is just how it is. Women are just more emotional. That's just how it be. And it doesn't really. You're not really explaining anything other than I think this is how it. It, so it must be that way and to me that seems illogical why do you want to make me feminine behavior modification behavior modification he's on to them now do you understand that why do you want to make me feminine he's asking them he's looking going why are they in my house why did i allow this and why are they doing this to me in front of my entire audience now he's calling them out on it what i mean what's wrong with being feminine because I'm a man. I don't want to be fe I clearly don't want to be feminine. So then why would you- stop acting like it. Mm -hmm. Then stop acting like it. Do you see what they're doing? They've created so much chaos that now some of his audience, especially ones that maybe are just joining or something, are like, oh, he was acting effeminate with these people? See? They just push out the narratives that they want, whether it happened or not. Remember what I just said. Where am I acting like it? You said that you yell and you're passionate about the stuff on stream. And I'm Entertainment? It's pretty emotional, yeah. Entertainment? Okay. Entertainment can be emotional, sure. Right. Um, sure. So, on a stream, entertaining and emotional. But the reason that I talk about this all the time is because I grew up in that environment and uh, I was fed a lot of lies from, from birth. Like they told me I had ADHD. A lot of people around me thought they were pansexual and she they's and they them's. A lot of people around me were believed in Biden or they just vote completely Democrat without even knowing who the people were. Supporting Ukraine. Destiny had to throw that in there, supporting Ukraine. So there you go. You see where the profile came from. They're in his house. They're probably in his medicine cabinet going through his computer. Who knows? They could be putting recording devices in his home. Who knows? how they've gotten the information. You've got three people in there distracting and he's on a live stream. Okay, so who knows what was going on there? All right, now we've got another clip of my favorite, Gloria Steinem, okay? We're gonna see her a little later in life and notice the similarities. We just saw Pixie, right? Let's take a look what Gloria Steinem looks like a little in her later years. You don't see as much of Gloria Steinem as we used to in the media and around the country, and I, I, I think I hear some of you saying that's good, but, but I think others are, are pleased with what she has done with the women's movement in this country. Some people still call it a radical movement. Uh, one thing about Gloria Steinem you may be interested to hear, she's a very, very petite, slight woman, much smaller than you would imagine if you haven't seen her in person. Very, very petite, slight woman, much smaller than you would imagine if you haven't seen her in person. Hello, Pixie? She's this big, right? Let's see what Gloria looks like. Anyway, I bring that up because she admits that her looks have had a lot to do with her success as a leader in the women's movement. And by the way, I wondered if she thought it was fair to call the women's movement radical. I don't think that we're radicals. I think the system yeah. is radically wrong, you know, but yeah. nonetheless, Jerry Falwell and, and uh, uh, much of Reagan's cabinet and Reagan himself and uh, all these folks, you know, seem to be quite upset by it. Have you ever met Reagan? No. Have you ever met Reagan? No. Now, forget about, we're going to get into Reagan. Are you looking at her? Is that not Pixie as an older person? <laughs> Is that not Pixie? That's Pixie. Look at her. 
everything head to toe. It's literally her, her disposition, her demeanor, everything about her from her hair color to how thin she is, her, her, her the way she carries herself. Gloria, Gloria, you are just a feminist, communist. Your alley is a socialist, pregnant miss, CIA. We got your number. Oh, you think we don't remember? All the dirty deeds you've done. Now we got you on the run. Calling Gloria. Gloria. <laughs> is this not crazy? This is Pixie. Her new nickname is CIA Pixie. All right. Now let's see what she's got to say about Reagan. Uh, much of Reagan's cabinet and Reagan himself and uh, all these folks, you know, seem to be quite upset by it. Have you ever met Reagan? No. Why don't you try and arrange a meeting with him? It would be interesting to to see. He is very popular with the American people. No, he's not. I mean, he, the only reason he got... Listen, he was elected by 26% of the American electorate, and it was the oldest and the richest and the whitest and the most male electorate in the history of the country, and most of them were just voting for change for the sake of change. I mean, I think that, that we have low standards for him because we know he's not very bright, so we sort of forgive him, you know, for... <laughs> for I, I can hear up, you people know. are throwing things at the set out there. It's remarkable. Can you imagine? This man is now picking up her book, which she just totally lied about Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan won by a landslide. Okay, everybody knows that. Even the even people that have, are not political junkies. Okay, Reagan won by a landslide. She's trying to say that he only won by twenty six percent of the election. I mean, and he wasn't that bright, really. I mean. Just go on national television and push whatever narrative you want with zero pushback from the host, as now he's going into her book. Unbelievable. It's remarkable to me that your uh, collection of writing starts with the one that I think made you prominent. I was a Playboy bunny. How many years ago was that? 20. You posed as a bunny. Or you were a bunny, right? You... Well, I, uh, under another name, I right. went to write an expose of being a bunny. Yeah. Uh, and here, 20 years later, how interesting is that? Under another name, Gloria Steinem went to pose as a Playboy bunny. So you infiltrated Hugh Hefner too. <laughs> the Playboy empire. <laughs> I mean, come on, people. <laughs> if I'm crazy, call me crazy, but I'm not crazy. So Gloria Steinem was a Playboy bunny. Well, let me ask, what is really the difference between a Playboy bunny back then and an OnlyFans prostitute today? Not much. Not much. Okay. I have one more clip that I'm going to play you, which I think is extremely important. And it's about where the mindset of Pixie is. This is, again, another clip of her on Sazcast. This is on a different occasion. Preachy women in the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. and it's turning off men or moderate voters. So you, uh, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I like beer, I like football, I like eating hamburgers, and there's way too many women basically looking down on men. They don't drink beer, or they tell us not to drink beer, they tell us not to watch football, they say don't eat hamburgers, don't eat meat, it's not good for you. Condescending, condescending preaching. Uh, the message is too feminine. There is a level of toxic masculinity. I think that exists. Yeah. But it's not, it's essentially been marketed and mm -hmm. spoken of in a wrong way. So for example, toxic masculinity is not you liking beer and, you know, mm -hmm. football. That's fine. That's good. Go for it. <laughs> um, toxic masculinity <laughs> is when you feel like you can't, express your emotions because everybody has told you that a man doesn't have emotions so you mm -hmm. feel like you have to drink a shit ton to basically bury the pain pixie i asked you this last time would you rather mm -hmm. date an andrew tate type figure or a dylan mulvaney type pick figure and you said dylan mulvaney oh my. and there you have it folks pixie was asked who she'd prefer andrew tate or Dylan Mulvaney, which is a trans female, the one from Budweiser, and she chose Dylan Mulvaney. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, the manosphere used to be dominated by men with knowledge. Now it's all about who can book Pixie. 
The voices of the Manosphere are now ran by hookers and feminists. Okay, I mean, I've been asked to appear on a couple of these podcasts, but I recognize that the Manosphere is a man space. Okay, and I'm not a trad con, nor am I a female who runs from podcast to podcast debating men in 304s all while wearing a pantsuit. Okay, I'm simply here to get knowledge and to give my female commentary. Okay, but let me say this. The manosphere has been infiltrated. Okay, this is no new phenomenon as history repeats itself again. Look at Othello, the FBI informant, and what he did to the Black Panthers. Just remember one thing. There's a war going on out here no one is safe from. It doesn't matter if you're three feet or eight one. I'm Dubrava. See you next time.